Well, the election's finally here. We'll have everything you need to know about key marriage ballot measures, both before and after the vote. Plus, a look ahead at some major post-election marriage equality milestones. At the American Foundation for Equal Rights, I'm Matt Baum, and welcome to Marriage News Watch for November 5th, 2012. This is it, election week. Obviously, no one should ever have their rights put up to a popular vote, but anti-gay activists have left us with no other recourse in these states. While we pursue marriage equality through courts on the basis of constitutional protection, these votes give us an opportunity to prove that public opinion has continued to turn in our favor. So if you're watching this on Monday or Tuesday, pause the video and go vote, especially if you live in one of the five marriage equality battleground states, Maine, Minnesota, Maryland, Washington, and Iowa. Visit afer.org slash election2012 for a roundup of what's going on in each of those states and how you can help get out the vote. After the election, we'll have a roundup of how the vote went in key states and an analysis of what it means for the future of marriage. The next major news will come from the U.S. Supreme Court. They're meeting on November 20th to decide whether to take multiple challenges to the Defense of Marriage Act and to Proposition 8. Depending on how the court rules, we could be looking at marriage resuming in California this month. You can be the first to know when that news comes. Visit AFER.org and subscribe here on YouTube to get breaking news alerts. As we head into the final stretch, the vote in the marriage battleground states is still very close. The most encouraging polling is coming out of Maine, where our support has remained in the mid-50s, with the opposition polling in the upper 30s. In Washington and Maryland, polls put us in the low 50s and our opponents in the mid-40s. And it's very tight in Minnesota, where both sides have remained tied in the upper 40s. In that state, the proposed anti-gay constitutional amendment requires 50% to win. In the past, pre-election surveys have overstated public support for the freedom to marry. But a lot has changed since the last time there was widespread voting on marriage. In particular, we now have 16 surveys showing a majority of Americans support the freedom to marry. This vote will be a crucial test of the change in public opinion. That's important because we've got our work cut out for us long after this election. States like Colorado and Rhode Island are likely to face important debate over marriage in 2013, and we need to be ready for them. Remember to visit AFER.org for the latest on the election and on the case to overturn Prop 8. At the American Foundation for Equal Rights, I'm Matt Baum. Thanks for watching.